In this video, we'll have a look at memory. Now, what is memory? Well, memory is where data is stored, where zeros and ones are stored. Uh, and when we're talking about memory in a computer system, we're generally talking about primary memory. Now, primary memory is any uh, memory device which is directly accessed by the CPU. So that includes the following. It includes RAM, ROM, virtual memory, and also cache. So let's have a look at the RAM. So RAM stands for random access memory. Um, it's also known as main memory. Um, and ultimately its purpose is to store all of the programs that are being used at that moment in time. So usually when you have lots of programs installed on your computer, if they're not open, then they're stored in secondary storage. When you double click an icon to open up a program, a copy of that program is put onto the RAM um, and we can have more than one program stored on RAM if we like. So the operating system actually will make sure that every program has its own allocation um, of memory on the RAM. And what that will enable is um, a CPU to multitask, to be able to actually um, process instructions from several programs um, seemingly all at the same time, but actually it takes it in turn very, very quickly. But it allows many programs to be open at once. Now, how does the RAM store data? Well, inside the RAM, there are tiny little transistors, and these transistors are fed a constant supply of electricity. And um, there are, there's an ability for um, these transistors, well, actually capacitors and transistors, to hold um, charges, and sometimes to actually allow charges to escape. And these different arrangements of capacitors and transistors, um, some with um, charges and some without, um, give us our data. Now the point is that electricity constantly needs to throw, th uh, flow through the RAM in order for the data to be maintained. So it's known as a volatile memory device. It loses data when there's no power. So if you're sat at your computer and you haven't saved your work onto secondary storage uh, and there's a power cut, then that's why you lose all of your work because it hasn't actually been permanently stored anywhere. It's simply on the RAM, and uh, which loses data when there's no electricity running through it. When programs are opened by the user, as we've already heard, they're loaded from the hard disk to the RAM. But why is that? Well, the whole point of putting programs onto the RAM when they are uh, in use is simply so that it can uh, deliver data to the CPU at an acceptable speed. Secondary storage is a very, very slow, generally slow storage devices. They won't be able to keep up with the rate at which the CPU needs data and instructions. The RAM is much quicker, so the CPU can access data much, much faster. So that's why it's put onto the RAM. The RAM is really important in that respect. Now, in terms of looking inside the CPU, uh, sorry, inside the RAM again to see how it works, I talked about capacitors and transistors. Now, the best way to think of what a capacitor is is to think of it like a bucket, which could hold um, an electrical charge, if you like. And transistors can be thought of as little plugs at the bottom of the bucket. They're like switches, which will allow electricity to um, to leak away. So, if a capacitor um, has um, electrical charge um, in it, so those transistors are stopping the electricity um, escaping, the charge is escaping, then that capacitor could be representing a 1. And if um, the transistors allow the data to um, escape, you can think of that as um, a capacitor representing a 0. So in that way, with millions and millions of combinations of these capacitors and transistors, all either having charges of electricity or not, that's how the arrangement gives us the data um, in the RAM at that moment in time. So there's different types of RAM. You've got dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM has one capacitor, one transistor, and as we've just seen, it needs um, electricity to run through it all the time. If it doesn't get refreshed every, milli every few milliseconds, then the data will get lost. Um, and there is also um, static RAM as well. Now, static RAM uses um, many more um, transistors. They're wired together. They don't lose charge quite um, as quickly. Um, so you don't have to refresh every few milliseconds. Um, so they're much, much faster, um, much faster memory device. It, doesn't need, it does still need a constant supply of electricity, uh, but it is much, much quicker. And because of that, you know, it's a new technology. It's going to be very expensive.
Now ROM is another type of primary memory. Now this is known as read-only memory. And the point of ROM, the purpose of the ROM, is to hold um, all of the boot up scripts. So when you turn your computer on, that is the device that has got all of the instructions to load up your, pro, uh, load up your computer and load up the operating system. Now, because the ROM kicks into action as soon as you switch it on, um, obviously it needs to have data stored when the um, computer switched off. It needs to be there at the moment when you turn your computer on. Um, so because of that, the ROM um, has to be non-volatile, okay, which means that it can store data even without electricity. So when you switch your uh, on your computer, uh, data in the ROM is accessed by the CPU so that the computer can load the operating system. It can't be easily overwritten by the user. It's read-only memory. So once the data has been um, flashed onto the ROM, um, it is there to stay. So it's classed as primary storage because it's directly accessed by the CPU. And it's got very, very quick data access rate. So it's very fast at delivering data to the CPU. Now, modern day uh, ROM chips are actually made of flash memory um, and it's brilliant, again, because it is non-volatile. It doesn't need power to hold the data. It's very, very quick at delivering data as, way, as well. Um, and um, just so that a um, bit of background information about flash memory, um, it simply works by having um, a couple of um, materials. Electrical current is flashed um, through forcing electrons sort of trapping them in between these materials and the different arrangement of electrons gives us our data now virtual memory um, is um, a little bit like uh, RAM to be honest um, in fact it is acting like RAM um, but it only comes into play when the RAM is full so if you think about the RAM, you're, you're storing, um, you're, you've opened up several programs, you're running loads of programs all at the same time, and it's absolutely brilliant. But there must be a limit where you can't load up another program because the RAM becomes full. And the moment that the RAM becomes full, in the olden days, your computer would stop working. But nowadays, what we um, do is, well, the computer will make use of virtual memory. So this is where the RAM goes, right, I'm full, I can't load any more, but actually I still want the computer to run. So what um, the operating system will do is it will actually use a little bit of secondary storage, so maybe a bit of the hard drive, um, and it will use that as RAM instead. So any programs that haven't really been um, used, they might be open, but they're not being utilized um, by the user. They might be copied off the RAM and put onto virtual memory. So the RAM has got a little bit more space for new programs to be loaded onto. It allows the computer to continue running. But the problem is the hard drive is so, so slow, really, in relation to the RAM at delivering data to the CPU that if the CPU did want to then access um, those programs that are currently stored in virtual memory, it would do so much slower. So it does slow the system down, but it does also allow the system to continue to work. And that is virtual memory. So if you're browsing the internet listening to music, the RAM is absolutely fine. But if you then start playing a game, maybe too many programs are loaded onto the RAM um, and it gets full. So the computer will relocate programs that haven't been used recently to the hard disk and the process takes time. Okay, So it does slow the system right down. But generally speaking, it keeps the, pro uh, the system running well. Okay, so how does the amount of RAM affect performance? Well, the amount of RAM is all about how much, uh, how many programs can actually be opened at the same time. So if you think about it, smaller amount of RAM means limited multitasking. Uh, so you're gonna have to use more and more virtual memory if you load up more programs than the computer can really cope with. Uh, and larger amount of RAM means greater storage of programs. You can have more programs open all at the same time. So therefore, it does lead to faster performance. You don't have to utilize virtual memory so often, and therefore the system um, continues to work quite quickly. And it says here that most PCs have about three to four gigabytes of RAM, okay? Fine for multitasking several programs, unless you wanna start playing a very graphic 
uh, graphical intensive game. So cache memory, the last bit of primary memory that you have to be aware of. Now we've already seen cache memory when we're looking at the workings of a CPU and we'll look in a little bit more detail. So the RAM we know holds programs that are open at that moment in time and it's pretty quick at delivering data to the CPU but it's not quick enough. The CPU might uh, perform you know, 3 billion um, fetch to code execute cycles in a second and the RAM can't keep up, it can't supply 3 billion instructions a second. So system performance would, if it was just directly a uh, accessing, if the CPU only directly accessed um, instructions from the RAM, it would slow things down. So this is where cache um, plays a very important role. Cache is only a few megabytes of uh, memory. It sits inside or maybe just outside the CPU, but very, very close to it. And because it's super close, it means that the access speed is incredibly quick. It, it can pretty much deliver the billions of instructions that, it, uh, that the CPU needs every second. So well-written programs make sure that regularly used instructions are positioned in the cache so that programs can run more efficiently uh, much more effectively, much faster. So if um, a CPU was re regularly using a certain um, set of instructions from a program, um, it's more likely to be placed in the cache so that um, the program can continue to be um, processed and run fast. Poorly written programs tend to uh, need to fetch the instructions they require from RAM one at a time. Um, and because the access to the RAM is so much slower, program perf uh, performs much less efficiently and much slower.